all of them are called crazy. <laughs> you know, it's crazy because going into that fight, I'm thinking like, damn, I think this dude might be relapsing, man. This dude might be relapsing. But uh, I guess, I mean, after it's just that Leonard Schwartz fight. After that, no, nah, man, he showed me nothing but love. Training okay. camp for me with many, many years, you know, after that fight. No, nah, he, he's cool. That's my boy. He's in Texas now. He's retired down in Texas with some mm -hmm. uh, attorney friends that's taking care of him. And, um, you know, I, I talked to him here and then, you know, Chicago Connection. We're both from Chicago. Okay. Uh, on the mic with Terrence Bailey uh, has a question. Experience with I, – I could never pronounce this guy's name. How you how you pronounce it, DB? I could be how you pronounce it. Bambucci. Yeah, thank you. Him. Yeah. If any. Do you have any experiences with him? And how good was he really? And part two of the question is: how do you feel about Tyson Fury? Salute to you, champ. Keep punching. Oh, cool. Yeah, interesting. When I first got a glimpse of uh Ike Bambucci, he was up and coming. Um, <laughs> actually he left Nigeria and he ended up have a couple of, I guess he moved to Texas, but some of his upcoming fights was in Los Angeles. And I was in Los Angeles at the time because uh, I was getting ready to go to camp with uh, Obed Sullivan and his management company was in Las Vegas. And they had these fighters. And Ike Bambucci was up and coming. Brewster fought that night. That's when I first met my mom Brewster. And uh, it was at a, I don't know, it was at the Beverly. It was at a nice place. Man. I wonder what, you know, the Isley brothers were there. A lot of like Hollywood people were there. You know, I even got pictures with him. And, um, man, when I see, you know, I steamrolled against this tough you know, contender, not contender, but up-and-coming fighter at the time. I mean, I, I knew that dude was special. But after seeing him fight the war with David Tua, you know, the most punches in the heavyweight in heavyweight history, that shows you that, that you know, he was championship-made material. And, of course, uh, Bird was, you know, toying with him, playing, you know, just taking him at ease, you know, over, you know, overconfident. You know, he was out boxing him. All it takes is one punch. Yeah, he, he put Bird to sleep. No if and buts. I mean, he knocked him out. Uh, it's sad chapter in boxing to see a possible great champion in boxing at the time, and he let that all go away because of his uh, demons, man. The bad habits, you know. The women, you know, unfortunately drove him to that moment. And I heard he's out now, and. You know, he'll never get that back. He'll never get his youth back. I mean, he, I, I heard he's trying to get a comeback. He's trying to come back. But isn't he in his 50s? Got to be. Late 40s. Very late 40s. Right, know? right, right, right. So, it's sad. Uh, yeah, it, it, yeah. And, um, he, I mean, it, it, it just, it's just a sad, sad story, man. That, you know, we could have seen a grand, grand heavyweight champ, but that never happened. Uh -huh. I probably could have fought him, too, around that time. Put a, right. Could have bought the best monster out of me. Mm. DB? Yeah, I, I saw one of your interviews. Uh, I don't know. Maybe this was probably about a year ago. And they asked you who your uh, top heavyweights were of all time. And it shocked me a little bit because you said Muhammad Ali, uh, Joe Lewis, and you said Evander Holyfield. Right. And I, you know, I, I like Holyfield. I think a lot of people like his warrior spirit. Right. And, you know, I think saying uh, Ali and Joe, Joe Lewis are kind of it's top heavy. I mean, a lot of guys are just going to like them just because, you know, they're just great. But if you remove those three, then who are the next three best heavyweights of all time behind those guys? OK. Um, oh, man, that's a good question. Um, uh, this one heavyweight from. Uh, Man, what was his name? Uh, shush. Um, that's a good question. I have to go with um, back in the in, in those time. You know, I seen the the PBC documentary of the first heavyweight uh, champion, Jack Johnson. Even though they had their little styles, but in that era, for what he did, it was iconic. Mm. So I definitely put him number you know one. So you told me the next. You know, top three after those. Uh, him, Jack Johnson, uh, Rocky Marciano, because in his era, and in his fault that he didn't have the Ali's at the time and, you know, whatever. He had the, the Cincinnati Cobra, who was slick. He had, you know, Jersey, Jersey Joe Wolcott, who was a strong fighter, who was slick as well. So, you know, I put Rocky Marciano because, man, he, 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 the Brockton, Massachusetts bomber, he, he could hit, man. And, uh, 
he beat a lot of slick fighters. You know, people don't know that. I mean, the dude that was supposed to out box him, he caught him. Sooner than later, he was all busted up. So I put Rocky to it. And and and, and the third, man, uh, you know, he, he's one of my favorites, man. Um, you know, I got a chance to meet him when uh, I was in camp uh, for the Von, Von Beam and Holyfield fight. When Von Beam from Chicago, he had uh, Lewis, Butch Lewis. He yeah. got rest his soul. Uh, come to find out, Bush Lewis was pretty much uh, Michael Spinks, Joe Frazier's like mentor. You know, he's mm-hmm. the one that was taking care of those two great champions. A lot of people don't know that Bush Lewis, the, the great former promoter, uh, who for Leon's, Michael Spinks when he fought Mike Tyson, you know, he was very famous with his suits, without t-shirts and stuff. God bless his soul. He showed me mad love when I was in camp. You know, I was up and coming back now. It was in '98. Yeah, when, when uh, Holyfield fought the Georgia Dome at the mm-hmm. University of Georgia. So, uh, so Frazier, man, it was like kind of, I'm like, man, I'm here with a dude who beat Ali, who took Ali's, I mean, I'm like, I'm like, I'm talking to you guys, I'm talking to Joe Frazier, he's coming to see the gym, see me spar with Von Bean, getting Von Bean ready, you know, for Holy, I mean, for Holyfield at that time. So, man, that was, that was a dream, man. So I put Joe, man, because it's relentless, you know, power left hook, and man, he was an Olympian and a world champion. He beat the greatest. So those are my next three. Good question, though. I mean, good, you know, good, you know, questions. So I you good, good answers. Thank you for that, man. You are uh, definitely a boxing historian and a good conversationalist. Uh, we could probably talk about boxing all day. I want to finish with this last question here. Uh, why is it important to reinvest in your community? And what are some uh, a few of the things that you want for your community and city? Um, it's, it's a necessary city because where I'm from, Homo Park, uh, Latham Homes, uh, North Side Chicago. It, you know, I grew up, like I said, major game, pro- you know, I mean, poverty, you know, brown skin, black skin. I mean, you know, I grew up with the brothers. I mean, we're all the same thing. You know, I'm 100% Puerto Rican, born but raised in Chicago. But, you know, our culture is so similar. It's just like in the Bronx, New York. I mean, we got so much similarity, you know, a lot of my family over there. And, and, you know, it was a con because as a young kid, you know, you know, growing up, you know, one of my stable mates, uh, you guys probably heard of him, David Diaz, you know, he beat mm-hmm. Eric Morales for the WBC title. He fought Manny Pacquiao. Well, me and D- David Diaz, we go way back. We won the national, uh, we won the gold, national gold Medal with Mayweather 93. But more than that, we were teammates. David Diaz was 10 years old. I was 13 or 14 years old. So I got a lot of history. And what he's done for the community, for the kids, you know, like myself, you know, inspire me that, you know, to see these champions like myself, you know, make, you know, push me even more. So, you know, now that uh, my foundation is really taking off, you know, these uh, charter schools hire, you know, my, my services for my foundation, which is my passion. Uh, it means a lot. It means a lot because once the Hurricane Maria hit my country, Puerto Rico, back in 2017, you know, I ended up marching with my people, man. I ended up raising more than a quarter of a million dollars. I was able to get a lot of water filtrations to people in Puerto Rico, you know, of all my people. And not only that, you know, I partnered with Feed America, you know, over here in Chicago, Illinois Food Bank. But I was partnered with Feed America with Daddy Yankee, the famous reggaeton artist, you know. Uh, he was at the Aragon Bar Room in Chicago. We ended up raising, you know, tons of food, you know, people donating food and all that. We had like two pickup trucks. So that was my calling, man. I mean, I felt good, and I was able to raise all that money, and I was able to save a lot of families. And then when I, the ice on the cake, you know, when I got to the island, a grand champion, Tito Trinidad, waited for me to, to service his community, you know, Coupe Alto, which is the San Juan area, not too far where I was born from, the hospital I was born, which is uh, Centro Medico. That's the hospital that my great, you know, dear friend, you know, his son, who, term, who, who had the same promotion as me, Hector Camacho, you know, and his son, Junior, you know, we came up together in the pros, you know, America Present. But these are the hospitals that we were able to service, you know, throughout Hurricane Maria, that their doctors were operating with flashlights, you know. It's crazy. I was able to see that in daytime, man. I mean, to see where I was born and these doctors where I was born at, I mean, they didn't have no lights, man. It was crazy, man. I was like, wow, man, you know. I mean, it made me feel even better that, man, I'm able to, you know, do great things for these people. And to put the ice on a cake, 
You know, a lot of people, you know, credit a lot of the great champions of Puerto Rico. So a simple fact, I'm pretty sure you guys are familiar with the Hall of Famer, grand champion, but he was in a fetal position, damn near in his bed, death bed, death bed. But when, when I went to go visit him, the great Wilfredo, the, the radar, Benitez, the man who outboxed, outclassed Roberto Duran, the man who fought a great 15 round fight with Sugar Ray Leonard, the man that had some of his wizard, defensive, skillful mood against Tommy Hearns. I mean, the, the, the list goes on and on. So my foundation, we were able to get with Fernando Media that's help and moving from Puerto Rico, we end up moving to Chicago. You know, he's one of the best hospitals in Northwestern Medicine Hospital in Chicago, where Obama goes when he's back home in town, President Obama, another dear friend of mine. But yes, with Fernando Media, that's He's in Chicago. He's alive because my foundation was able to provide, you know, you know, housing and all that good stuff, you know, through my connection. And now he's in the Homer Park neighborhood where I was raised, where I migrated, where all the Puerto Ricans at. And um, yeah, man, a lot of people don't know that. And a lot of people, you know, glad you're hearing this. You know, I got a great legend that I'm looking out from. He's doing a lot better. Uh, if you check out my Instagram, you know, Fresno Kendall, you'll see stories about me and Roberto Benitez. You know, he's my you know, childhood, you know, hero. Remember, Benitez in the Guinness Book of World Records. A lot of people don't know this. He was 17 years old when he won the world championship. Yeah, he'll never Rico. be broken again. Never yes, be at the Roberto Clemente College. I mean, this dude did something that nobody can ever do again. You can never break the record because yeah, it can't happen. The, <laughs> the laws, I mean, you can't even turn pro. I mean, you can turn pro, right. so whatever. But to be a champion, I mean, that, 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 you'll never see that again. Mm. But uh, man, you know, I have the honor, and we're getting ready to do, you know, a documentary, you know, and what and what my foundation did, of course, with, with Fernando Benitez. You know, we got to get him recognized, man. You know, he's a forgotten champ, man. And you know, that's another thing that I want to, you know, talk about because this guy, he did so much for our country, you know, for Puerto Rico, and for people to forget about him, you know, I mean, it, it's sad. But yeah, we're gonna do something for him, for him and his family. And this documentary that should be coming soon, you know, that we're working on with, with Fernando Benitez, you know, the, the greatest champion of Puerto Rico and the Guinness Book of World Records, 17 years old, a teenager world champion.